Hey everyone, David Nuno here, Tech Sags Rewind, presented by T-Mobile. They want you to visit tmobile.com slash across America to learn more about how you can get value and coverage with T-Mobile. Uh, great show here on a Monday. Billy Lucci called in. Uh, he's going to start joining us on Tuesdays for a full hour, but we had to talk about the national championship, get his takes on everything going on there. We also had the... Uh, OG Go Hour. That's right. The original gangsters, Gabe Bach and uh, Olin Buchanan, joined me at 8.50, and we went extended into 9, uh, I don't know, until 9.20, whatever it was. It was fun. Tom Hart talking about the national championship game. That was good times. Around Aggieland, there's a guy named Richard Zane. He's known for uh, Around Aggieland and much, much more, like being Clark Kent. He was on the show as well. Coach Buzz Williams about that big victory over Arkansas, getting ready for Ole Miss. All the books he reads, one a week, and he went through his schedule. It was good times. It is Tex Ags Rewind. Presented by T-Mobile. All right, you knew there was no chance. I knew it when I said it. Should have just not said a word. When I said, I wonder what Gabe's going to show up in. I forget how I phrased it, but we're all in gray. And who shows up with his life preserver jacket and his gray? Gabe Bach. Welcome in, buddy. You just knew I was going to do that. Yeah, I actually had kind of a greenish style hoodie on this morning and my life preserver. Yeah. Marty McFly style, and I decided I got, I mean, you just can't. If Tomas is wearing gray and the two guys up front are wearing gray, Zane and Dalt, and you two, I got the memo. You got the memo. I got the memo. This so was not I'm, planned. I'm gray. For but, the, you, but you knew I was going Life Preserver style. Well, I, I knew that. Well, it's a vest. And by the way, somebody, let me see if I can find it on the, uh, on the chat, said, uh, let's see where it is. Basically, somebody said they want you to start selling that uh, on the website. <laughs> <laughs> it was good stuff. So, welcome into the show. Well, buddy. I'll tell you, Olin Buchanan, it's been set. Tomorrow will be seven months since my last show. And the last time I've been in this studio, in talking into a mic with my man, OB, we spent eight and a half years doing this. This is as close as I've ever said to him, though, and I'm a little bit uncomfortable because he's got longer arms than yeah. you think. Well, Sucker could hit me with a left jab really fast. If I get out of line, but OB, I counted it up 213 days and that should surprise you not. Well, I, I was just thinking, what well, you were at, talking like, 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 what did you leave? I because didn't. I just thought you were on an, an vacation. Vacation. vacation, yeah, <laughs> another vacation. <laughs> and uh, Nuno, you ready to slide over? And let <laughs> yeah. me take my spot like, back. What, what Nuno staying? <laughs> hey, I take two days off for <laughs> New Year's week, and people are like, "You can't take time oh, off." I'm like, "Come on now." I heard Gabe took some time off. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, you got plenty of stuff built up, Nuno. You take off whenever you want, my friend. <laughs> you take off whenever you want. <laughs> oh, I'll see if Josh look, and look, Brandon. We don't have HR okay. here. You just take off when you want to. Okay, well, that's true. There's no doubt about it, man. I tell you, it's good to be back though, and it's interesting how fast years go by. Mm -hmm. Sometimes days go slow, years go really fast. This Saturday will mark that one year from the when I called Billy randomly and told him we needed to chat and had that conversation. I mean, it just like two days later he calls you. That's we're at the year mark. Yeah, you know, we are of this whole process. My wife wow. and I were going through that the other day. Just like, can you believe it's about to be a year from that first conversation? And that first There's, conversation from my end it was like. Pfft, this ain't happening. No. And, and it happened. But you didn't think you could make yeah. it happen. I didn't think I could happen. I didn't think I, it, it was going to be possible, but it, it ended up working out. And It really I mean, did. You're, you're on Tech Sacks quite a bit. You took a month off, but you're back. Oh, yeah. I, I kind of like this. Just All this pop uh, in conversation, I, but I didn't think it could happen. There was no way it could happen. I, I think I'm going to have to go in and ask for a raise. I'm thinking, <laughs> well, why was there no way it could happen? And then why did it happen? Exactly. Well, we had we had to we had to remove somebody. <laughs> How you been, Obi? How's my man Q doing? He's he's doing well. I know just he's got 18. accepted almost every college in the country. Yeah, we're well. There's one big one that we're still waiting to hear from. Is it across the street? It is. Okay. It is. I I told him once. I said, you know, and and people that know me know I don't I don't like to spend money unless I have to. I'm yeah. the same. Way. I said I would love. I, hear you. I would love to give you the money to buy your Aggie ring, but I may have to give him money to buy that. Tennessee ring or that Mississippi State ring. You know, we'll see. Exactly. But if, he's still waiting on the dogs, too. Who, he's who's waiting he on Georgia tonight? and Florida. Uh, he's rooting for uh, – he'll root for Georgia tonight, no doubt about it. But Are you pumped about tonight? Yeah, I'm excited. I think it'll be a fun game. I, um, You know, I don't mean to be negative, but I feel like it was such a great NFL weekend, and especially that game last night that goes overtime that – Everyone was so dialed in to what was happening in the NFL. I feel like college football is forced to take a back seat with the additional week of, of NFL ball. I just don't feel like there's the buildup uh, nationally that maybe this game deserves. But, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for a lot of different reasons. I want to see how – I want to see Kirby's face. Like, to me, Kirby is 
Saban versus Kirby. That's the that's the battle in this game. And, and Kirby's a central figure because he, there's so much pressure on him to win. And he's promised so much to Georgia fans and, and the entire state. And he's built this and he's come so close. And it's not I don't think it's indicative. I don't want to be unfair to speak. Just if Georgia doesn't win tonight, doesn't mean they're not going to win a national championship. Right. I mean, they're going to be in the mix more often than they're not. It's just that you come this close again. And you come this close against your mentor and the GOAT. And, and if you can't get over that hump, the anguish will be real. And Kirby doesn't hide his emotions. You'll be able to see it on his face. So that, from a theatrical standpoint, is kind of what I'm looking at first. Because you, you very rarely see anguish on Saban's face. I mean, you see fury. You see amusement. You see indifference. Uh, but he's... He, he doesn't usually get caught in something unexpected. What do we got going on in around Aggieland? Man, the biggest storyline is obviously Buzz Williams' team, right? They won their sixth consecutive game on Saturday, beating Arkansas 86-81. Uh, to 81. Now, A&M had as big of a 17-point lead in the second half. Uh, we're like, oh, A&M's going to cruise, win by double digits. Arkansas fought back, needed a clutch Quentin Jackson three-pointer with 34 seconds left. He finished with 16 points uh, to lead A&M scores. Five Aggies in double digits. Henry Coleman with 14. Andre Gordon, 13. Tyrese Radford with 12. And Wade Taylor, the fourth, with 11. Free throw shooting was atrocious, but Hassan Diara and Marcus Williams hit the last four clutch free throws to seal the deal. 2-0 in SEC play. They are just one of two undefeated teams in the conference. Auburn's 3-0. That's A&M's first 2-0 start in conference since 2015 2016 wow six long. seasons ago so they'll be back at reed arena looking to go 3-0 in league play when they host old miss on tuesday night tip off scheduled for 7 30 p.m central time and that'll be televised on the sec network on the other side though the women struggling mm. to begin sec play uh, they fell to florida yesterday in double overtime 97 to 89 get asha hoppy 25 points kayla wills had 23 Florida outscored AM 19 to 10 in the fourth quarter to force extra time. Uh, tough stretch will probably continue as they travel to Columbia on Thursday to face number one, South Carolina, 6 o'clock Central Time tip off, also on the SEC network. Congratulations to graduate student Amber Park for winning the Mexican Women's Amateur at Guadalajara Country Club this weekend. She earned herself an exemption into the 2022 U.S. Women's Amateur, which we played on August the 4th, August the 8th through the 14th at Chambers Bay and University Place, Washington. A&M Women's Golf will begin their spring slate on February 21st at the Icon in Humble, Texas. And the last thing I got going around Aggie Land, Mia Ponte is going to be uh, representing her home country of Canada. She's been in invited to the women's under 20 national team identification camp as that team prepares for the 2020 Conca 2022 CONCACAF women's under 20 championships played in February, March. Thank you very much, sir. Of course, Papi. I uh, appreciate it. By the way, gray, gray, Tom Hart had on gray. It's very too. monochromatic here in this office today. Did you see Tom Hart though? Tom Hart. Same thing. Everyone's in on the vibe. Except Billy. Of course, doesn't want to play a game. You mentioned uh, post game Javante having a huge impact in the game, changing it. What did he do that really affected the way Arkansas had to go about their business? I think I think when JB went in, I think we had uh, three guys with two fouls. Uh, Henry had two. Ethan had two. Cash had two. Uh, Henry may have even had two. So we may have had four guys with two fouls. Uh, Javante hasn't played since Dallas Christian. And uh, we do individual skill work four days a week, the four days a week that we're not playing games, and that is not an off day. Uh, our bigs are Ashton Smith, who's redshirting, uh, Javante Brown, Aaron, obviously. Uh, Henry joins us two of those four days. Uh, and I think that uh, Javante's attitude, uh, while not being playing, uh, has been tremendous. And I think that his impact in the first half when things were not going well, particularly the first six or seven minutes, I thought he completely changed the game. I thought uh, his traffic rebound on the defensive end, uh, his putback on the assist from Marcus, the block shot, um, I thought I, I thought he played tremendous. But I think if even if you weren't watching the game and you were watching our bench, you could see how happy our kids were uh, for him uh, because of how hard he was playing, but also – the production he had during the time that he was on the floor. Uh, this is a kind of a weird question to ask, but how do you guys win a game where you get out-rebounded? 
and you miss a bunch of free throws, yet you lead for 90% of the second half, and it's, uh, or, excuse me, all the second half, and just how did you guys do it? Like, what, what was the secret ingredient? Yeah, I, I think your point is right. Like, I, and I told our kids that yesterday when we worked, like, I don't know how many games we can win going forward with the numbers that we had. Uh, they out-rebounded us more than TCU, and TCU was for sure our worst. And uh, I have not uh, shied away from it with our team nor publicly. Um, our ability to not uh, just completely get crushed on the glass is going to be uh, an important characteristic over the next 16 games. Uh, we have talked as a team in non-conference that our line, the season for us, our line would be based on our turnover rate, and all of the things that we talk about that go into rebounding. And then going into conference play, uh, I added a third element, turnover rate, rebounding, and free throw percentage. They uh, had 20 offensive rebounds. We only defensive rebounded 57% of the balls they missed. That is atrociously bad. Uh, we are distinct last after two games in defensive rebound percentage in the SEC like distinctly last. And that is really hard to overcome and particularly win. Uh, and then we shot 53% from the free throw line. A little bit of that was Javante went one of five. That hurts us. And then a guy that we count on to make free throws is four and he goes one of four. So there are two outliers in that stat versus Arkansas. But at the same time, you never know what the game's going to present. Four gets fouled on a three and only makes one of three. And then Javante uh, is trying to dribble handoff on the last possession of the first half coming out of a timeout, and they foul. Um, they didn't mean to foul, but he goes to the line and goes 0 for 2. And so um, regardless of who's shooting them, I think free throw percentage is going to be important the rest of the way, and we have to be able to shoot more, better than 53%. Thank you so much for watching Tech Sags Rewind presented by T-Mobile. want you to like, subscribe, comment, share, do all the good stuff. We will be back with you guys Tuesday. Thanks so much for watching.